Hi everyone, it's Mike with Launcher Startups and in this video I want to show you exactly how I built a $675,000 Shopify business. I want to go through all my failures, things that I didn't do right, things that I did do right so that you don't make the same mistakes and that so far you can learn from my mistakes and, and be a lot more successful faster than I was. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, here in my dashboard you can see my total sales at about $675,000. Again, that's not all profit, about 40% is profit. Um, we can go take a look at this year to date. So year to date, so far for 2019, I made a little over $100,000, again, 40% profit. Um, average order value is about $30.21. So let's jump right into the video and get started. So exactly how I built a Shopify business. So a lot of the questions that I asked myself when I was first starting um, was, you know, can you really make money uh, selling products online with Shopify? You know, how much money do I need to get started? You know, the biggest one for me I felt like was like, Shop is Shopify a scam? You know, is dropshipping saturated? Or, you know, how can I be successful and make money online too? So I think I felt like I did a lot of researching before I took any action online. Um, one of the main things, I don't know if you guys know about this, but one of the main things that I did was go on Shopify success stories because back then when I didn't have a business, um, I just needed something to kind of motivate me to, to kind of get me going. And the hardest parts uh, during this was like finding things to help motivate me. So when I went on Shopify success stories, you can go on shopify.com and uh, actually Google this success stories. You can see other companies that that did well, you know, selling products on Shopify, whether it was, you know, phone cases um, or, you know, selling backpacks. It was just good to see that, you know, there were people making money on Shopify. So I think that gave me the mo motivation to kind of figure out like, hey, okay, it's, it's not a scam. You know, people are making money online. And when I first started, it's just like, you see everyone, especially on YouTube, saying, you know, they made a million dollars and they made $300,000 last month. And, you know, realistically, that can happen. But I think when we set our expectations so high initially, we get disappointed when we don't make that much money within the first 30 days. So I kind of just wanted to show you, like, when I was first starting, this is what kind of gave me motivation every day to, like, find a product or think of different products or can I just make a successful business rather than just like creating all these type of scammy products that you might see that are selling like fidget spinners online. So things like that that people have already sold on uh, and you see other YouTube gurus try to say they could they sell but then if you go here on Shopify and you look at success stories you can see really profitable businesses and real businesses doing well. So it kind of gave me that motivation to start and if it does, you know, help you give you motivation, it, it definitely helped me take a look at it. So again, so that's what I took a look at. So we'll just kind of go into my, uh, just a little quick background. I'll go real quick on this. I don't know if you, if this is going to bore you. If it does, just skip along. Um, so my journey, um, I graduated college in 2012. I'm from Seattle, Washington. Um, so since I was 22 years old, um, I'm 29 now. 22 years old, I was working a nine to five as a business analyst. And during this time, you know, straight out of college, you think making, you know, 75 to $80,000 right out of college, you think that's great. You, you know, honestly, I thought it was, I, it was a lot of money. But at the end of the day, you know, working a nine to five was just not for me. So I was trying to do everything um, every day after work. You know, as soon as I was off work, um, I was just trying to figure out new ways to kind of make money or things that I could, you know, save up money and create a business so that I could start creating, you know, more money on the side or another side of income. So during this time for, you know, for the last seven years, these are kind of the different businesses that I, that I try to start and I constantly failed. So I just want you guys to know that, you know, during this process of you trying to be successful, especially on Shopify or drop shipping or anything like that, you're going to fail. And seeing failures are a good thing. So the very first thing that I failed at was um, I tried around 2012, 2013, um, you know, it was really big for iPhones and uh, iPhone apps. So I created an iPhone app. Um, I'll go specific. If you guys want to know about my iPhone app, you know, ask me about it later. But I spent $10,000 
and I hired a developer from India. I think I went on to like freelancer.com, hired them, try to create this cool app that I thought we, you know, would be amazing and it failed. You know, I, I wasted $10,000 of hard earned money that I saved up for almost a year and I wasted it and I thought, you know, I was done. You know, I was like, I need to create, I need to start a business that I could actually make money today. Like I need to make money tomorrow. I want to, I want to find something. What could I possibly do? So that's what I got really intrigued with, uh, uh, with Shopify. And the reason with Shopify is because if I sold a product, I knew, okay, if I bought a product for $2 and I sold it for 20, I knew tomorrow if I sold that product, I could get $18 in profit. So it made sense in my head. When I was trying to go through all these other routes of like creating an iPhone app, I was like, I honestly don't even know how I'm going to be profitable. So I think I was thinking too big. And what I really loved about Shopify is that you could make money without having a lot of investment. So um, in the later slide, you'll see that it only took me, I think I only invested about $300 on my first business. But my first business that I tried to do was um, keychain breathalyzers. So keychain breathalyzers, um, let's see if I think this is actually the keychain breathalyzer that I tried to sell. So one cool thing about it back in like 2013, 2014 was that like this was brand new like no one had thought of this um so i thought it was like i thought it was so unique i've never heard of it and i put it on a shopify website and i thought i could sell but um i thought i could just put it on a website and it didn't do that well uh i think i only sold like one product um and i was i did it through influencer marketing and it did not do well at all part of the reason was just because it was like really cheap and the quality of it was you know not reliable like people wanted to use a real reliable breathalyzer and that didn't work so that failed real quick um, and then I tried my second try of uh, I tried portable Bluetooth speakers and I quickly had to learn the hard way that you cannot compete you cannot compete with these major brands so like choosing a product or finding a product that's easily accessible and especially um, huge companies or huge brands that have already established themselves it's going to be very hard to compete. So I knew that it couldn't just be, it had to be a unique product and it couldn't be just any product that you could find um, for anybody else. You know, like there was Bose and JBL that were selling for $99. Like I can't compete with that type of brand. Like no one's going to spend $100, or $150 on my portable speaker that you could find online or find and, you know, private label on Alibaba. So that was a hard mistake that I had to deal with. Um, so then I found my first success. So, so I, I saw people selling these um, kind of, you know, these t-shirts um, on like Redbubble. So I got really intrigued by it because like I, I got Facebook ads for people selling on, um, selling like the likeness of athletes. So I got really like, you know, you can see LeBron James here. And I mean, they're, they're, they're like, pretty creative but I could see that there was a lot of Facebook ads I mean I, I was in the sport so I saw a lot of these ads and I was like okay if I copy exactly what they're doing like they can't sue me because it's not necessarily it's not proprietary to them like they're just using the, you know designs that are already made of like sports athletes so I just wanted to see if there's can I get any traction can I really get any sales so I put up um, a website um, and Within, I think I did it during the holidays. So people, I think I did it during around December. Or I started the business. Or I started Shopify around um, November, December of uh, 2016, and then I got twenty thousand dollars within my first two months just doing influencer marketing. And I saw success. I was like, okay, all I did was imitate exactly what these people were doing, and I did it on print on demand. And before print on demand wasn't that popular, people didn't know that you could just create um, a design and put it on any of these types of products, t-shirts, backpacks, and you would make money just selling the product and um, you didn't have to buy it in bulk because people would only, or Printful would only ship out or make the actual product if people bought. So you didn't even have to worry about inventory. But the bad thing was that the prices for these, you know, like a t-shirt was $8.95 if you sold it for $25. You know, the margins were really low. So then I went to Alibaba and I tried to make t-shirts on my own. 
Um, and that worked, that did work well because I was able to private label and I got t-shirts on Alibaba for like, you know, two or three dollars and I sold them and I bought, I bought them in bulk. And then as soon as I invested any money in it, of course, the business or Shopify shut it down because I was using the likeness of celebrities. But because I saw a little bit of success there, it kind of just gave me valid proof or validation that like, okay, you know, Shopify isn't a scam. You know, I could actually make money online. So then that's when it came to like me like really getting into it. And I was like, all right, what do I need to do? How can I make this a lot more legit? Because I know you can make money online. Okay. I know there's a, there's a certain way. And I, I compared myself to other people. Or I compared myself to other businesses that I saw online. And I was like, I should be able to do just as well as they can. And I, I, I knew that I could do just as well as them. So, so I knew I was on to something. But the main thing, so what I did to basically even get that $20,000 was I would place my ad and I would contact or do it through influencer marketing and I would contact all these pages on Instagram that were doing well, you know, like they were doing really well because they would post like sports highlights and they would post my ads. Um, so that's what I did back then. And then, you know, obviously, as you can see, it got shot, it got shut down, but I knew I was on to something. So then we can go into my, basically like my first successful, let's go over here. My first successful store. Found Alibaba and um, I researched products. So I was basically, you know, searching for different products that I could sell online. Um, and I was, the main thing that I was really doing was searching for only unique products that can't be easily found. Um, and then when I did find a good product, um, I would request, this is very key, you know, like I want you guys to request a sample with the logo, logo and only do that for one product. So only one item. So some people make the mistake of going on to, so like if you go, so this is back to my portable blender idea. So you, if you look here and you, you find all these different suppliers, like what you're really looking at are these suppliers. And what I want to do, I want you guys a trick that I, that's pretty cool is you contact these suppliers and then you tell them if you, you know, can I order a sample? And when you order a sample, you just tell them in that sample, can you put my logo on one of the products? And they're willing to do that because they want to see, you know, they know that you want to see your sample with your logo on it. So a trick instead of buying in bulk is to immediately Ask for a sample with your logo on it. So again, you can make your logo on Fiverr.com. Go on Fiverr.com. Ask someone to make a logo. Um, for my company that I did for Speedy Blender, I honestly just changed the font on this. And um, I sent over the logo to the supplier. So then you can see they send the, and, and they ship it to you. So when you take that and then you, you hire a professional photographer to take photos for your website using that one sample. So because you did that, you didn't really invest in much because some people think, okay, when I private label, that means I need to buy 300 of these portable blenders and invest in it. And I, you know, I like to do things with the lowest amount of risk. And if you can do that, it makes your, it makes your website look more, look more legitimate because now it looks like you're selling a private label. You have like this special unique brand on your website when it was only really one product. And then you would only buy in bulk once you start getting sales. So, I mean, I know a lot of people nowadays is, you know, they want to jump into Facebook ads. And I had to learn the hard way. I think I, I spent a good like thousand dollars wasting money on Facebook ads because I would just go on Facebook and I would just guess, you know, I would guess who my, um, who my customer would be. I would say, you know, they would be, you know, women, you know, 18 to 24, you know, they're from the United States. And when you do this guessing, you, you'll lose a lot of money, especially if you're trying to scale. So then I quit doing that. And I only had $300 to start with. So about $75 went to the sample and then $225 went to advertising. So I knew influencer marketing was the best way for me to go. So if you go on influencer marketing, that's basically, you know, going on Instagram and then finding these different types of pages that can um, kind of 
showcase your product and you know basically just provide an advertisements for your product um, and the good thing about that is that it does so well because back in 2016 that the timeline used to be chronological and not um, it, it wasn't based on an algorithm as it is today so it was a lot more effective than it is uh, than it was today so that was one of the things and one of the things that I focused on was fame bits so I don't know if you guys know about this but it's actually it was bought out famebit was bought out by YouTube so basically you go on famebit.com and this really helped me out because I wanted to find influencers or real influencers uh, on you know either YouTube or Facebook or Instagram so what's cool is like I like to sort it by most hired so you go on famebit.com to find your influencers and instead of just like like randomly going on Instagram to find these pages you can find like these major influencers and contact them through here so it's a lot safer you won't be scammed and you can find people that would are willing like these people are out willing to provide ads for your product and you know you can sponsor these channels to to create a video and then now you have content so that's one of the cool things that you could do with famebit.com and that's what I really like and that's what's worked for me in the past um, as well as going on influencer marketing and just like finding pages on Instagram but that's just one of the things that I did and that's how I was successful with my first store so going into the product research um, this is probably a, a real hard one for a lot of people um, so you know you want to research unique products on Alibaba um, Facebook videos, photos uh, for products and competitors. So like if you go on Facebook and you just type in shop now, that helps. You know, that helps because you can see all these different types of companies that are, you know, making ads. So you can, what you want to do is you don't want to reinvent the wheel. So if you can find other companies that are selling these different types of products and you know that they're doing well, then you know that you can also be successful. So you don't want to reinvent the wheel and just want to see, you know, I would honestly think it's a bad thing if I can't find anyone selling it. If I see other people selling it, then that means they've already validated the product for me and that means they're doing well. And so I can get a piece of that market. So that's how I see. So exactly when I did speedyblender.com, if you type in portable blender here, you could see that there's a lot of people or a lot of companies that are selling portable blenders so that gave me the product validation that I needed to start this company I needed this I wanted to get into the portable blender game okay so that's what I did and that's the type of the product research that you want to go through uh, another way that people don't talk about is researching big drop shipping sites to see their best selling products so again um, a, a big company is like Hygo shop they're a huge um, drop shipping company because they sell multiple products um, and the cool thing about this is that when you go on highgoshop.com you can see like their best sellers and today you know it, it'll be kind of difficult to create brands like this because uh, there's so many companies that are already selling you know doing multi products but the cool thing is that if you can take one of these products and then just turn it to a one product store you're more likely to convert because it looks like you created that brand like it looked like you created this makeup bag but then you really didn't you know it's just like branding the product so none of these products that they're selling here are branded so if you click on any one of these and you created a one product store you can see there's product validation because there's you know like it shows that they're selling it on this site so it helps me find different products online if you go on these big drop shipping sites um, another thing I like to do that people don't know about is go on to semrush.com. On semrush.com, you know, you type in big drop shippers names, and then here you can look at what's the biggest or the top organic keywords that are sending traffic to that site. So then you can see that toothpaste dispenser, um, self stirring mug, or bring me wine socks, like, or like, you know, these are the different products that are being sold or highly being sold on that site Hygo shop so you can if, if you want to and you you find other competitors the cool thing about that is you can go here to organic research and you can find these different top organic keywords 
that people are selling online and then you can see that these big drop shippers you can kind of steal their products and then create a one product store so this is just one of the different ways that I was able to help find me speedy you know help find speedy blender for me because I knew it was a hot selling product so I knew there was validation um, again there's different ways that you can go you can go on myip.ms and search all the uh, all the Shopify sites with high traffic um, and then at the end of the day you just want to confirm and validate the product okay so the next part to this is like what I had to do and was developing the website so the the one of the main competitors that I found was uh, blendjet.com so I could tell that they based on my research they were the they were the main competitor they they had a good amount of the market um, if you go here and then type in blend jet USA you can see that I mean they have 87,000 followers and they're doing really well with their brand a lot of people are supporting them a lot of people are posting about them so it, it makes them look pretty legit so I want you guys to focus on the, the developing the website and this shouldn't be overlooked at but it should be the probably the easiest part and the reason why is like you want to focus on this is Blendjet look how professional they look and then here's someone else that's selling the same product and you could tell by the quality of their pictures they're not that great and this between these two companies are the difference between a ten thousand dollar a month product and you know a couple hundred dollars a day you know that's the difference this is the difference because you can tell in the website I mean you can honestly go here to the FAQs and you can see how long their shipment takes and you should see like you know due to extraordinary demand you know obviously they're just saying an excuse but 10 to, it takes 10 to 20 business days so you can tell this is a drop shipping site and just that just based on this information alone people are not going to want to buy a product that takes 10 to 20 business days and a company like Blendjet you know that they're using like shitbop.com to handle and coordinate all their sales so what they do is they have it in they order in bulk and they ship it to shitbob and they handle all their all their distribution for them so that it's not necessarily like drop shipping like what these guys are doing over at the pureblend.com so i just want you guys to focus on like the little subtle differences between between a company like this and you can see their website it's not going to convert that well compared to a company like blendjet so you guys just need when you're developing the website you need to take a look at just being professional versus scammy and then using professional you know professional photos you just want to make sure that you're 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 using good photos um, and you want to look like a legitimate business and to be honest for my website you can take a look at speedy blender this took me about three hours to make so just finding the content and just putting it in so it's it's it was fairly you know it wasn't that bad you know finding all this content was everything that I found online uh, one of the cool tricks that I did was actually doing like Google reverse image I don't know if you guys have tried this but if you go to like Google reverse image um, and let's see so say like we go onto this and you click one of these photos you can copy image address go here search for image and then it'll bring up every single website that's using that product or using that that photo so that's how I was able to find different content for my for my website so I would just take it and then I would go into these different sites and I would either you know basically take their videos or take their content because they're selling the same exact product if they don't have their logo on it and you can you can use that for your own website and your own content so that's just a little cool trick that I learned uh, because I know making the website could be the hard part if you don't have good content and basically everything on my website was just things that I had already found online so again that's just another way that you guys could do it so I feel honestly feel like once you found a product and then you're developing the site 
the hardest part is the marketing strategy. And for me, I use influencer marketing on Instagram. So, you know, either on Instagram, funny, you know, like we could just do like funny videos. You can, you can find really broad pages like this. And like you can see here, business inqu inquiries, uh, inquiries, DM me. So you can find videos like this or pages like this to post your video, but they're really broad. You know, you're gonna have to find what, something more spe specific to your niche. So like, you know, if for me, for, for the Speedy Blender, I wanna type in like girl fitness, then I can find um, more a more better niche or match with these pages and the product. So back then, IG stopped being effective for me in 2017 when IG went from chronological feeds to having an algor algorithm. So you would get a lot more organic reach back then because when you would post, I don't know if you guys know about Instagram now, but when you would post back then, it would be chronologically. So then you would have to really worry, before I had to worry about, okay, is it 3 p.m. Uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, which is 6 p.m. Eastern, was probably the best time every day, so I posted. And I got a lot of feedback based on the times that I posted and it was really efficient. But then that became saturated because you wouldn't get that much reach now today with the algorithm and it didn't do that well. So then after that, I noticed that IG pages, so I, I was doing well, you know, I was making like maybe five, ten thousand dollars a month just basically going and doing influencer marketing. But then it slowly became saturated with influencing marketing and I needed to find new pages every day, especially when it went from the chronological to algorithm feed, like the live feed that came. So then that's again how I got introduced to FameBit for influencers. The cool thing with FameBit is that, let's see if I can find FameBit again. The cool thing with FameBit is like I, I did it through sponsorships and you might think like you can't sponsor any of these channels, but if you find small enough channels, then you can sponsor them. And the cool thing that I wanted to do is like, I love the idea with influencer marketing. I love the idea with Instagram, but I hated when they changed it from chronological to algorithm. So I couldn't get that much reach. The other thing that I hated, I absolutely hated about influencer marketing was that I'd pay $75 and it would be a 24 hour post and then it would be forever deleted. I hated that aspect. So then, which led me to go onto YouTube and find different channels that were willing to post my um, my product. And when you find like different pages, so this is so take your mindset from um, influencer marketing and doing it for YouTube. But now these videos are forever on YouTube; will forever be there. So what you would do is you'd say like, "Hey, uh, to be on your next video, I would pay." a hundred or hundred fifty dollars but that video would get you know like five hundred thirty thousand views and it would be here forever it would be on YouTube forever so every time at the beginning of this YouTube video my ad would show up so it was very similar to influencer marketing and no one was doing this and that's how I've been able to succeed today is find different people to sponsor so like if you want to type in like fitness videos for women you can find a lot of people that are trying to start channels. So you can go here, go to filter, and I like to go like upload date. And you can find a lot of these smaller channels because you know these are the type of people that don't get a lot, don't have a lot of followers. So like let's try this. Fitness mine. So they only have 1,200 followers. So if you contacted them, and ask, you know, you go to their about, you can probably find, you know, see there it goes, for business inquiries. You go to their videos, and you can see that they have about 1,200, so they're, they're posting videos every single day, and they're slowly working on getting their channel bigger. But the cool thing about this is that you can sponsor these channels. You can sponsor, so because I'm doing speedyblender.com, I would contact, where is it? I would contact these, these influencers and ask, hey, can I sponsor one of your videos or can I sponsor your channel? Uh, you just have to showcase my product at you know like the first 10 seconds of your video. And the cool thing about this is that you know like they'll have a video that gets 1,800 views or 
like let's see if we can go here and we can go to most popular you'll see that sometimes some of their videos end up going viral like this eight months ago got a hundred fifty eight thousand views or this one got twenty four thousand views and these videos will forever be on YouTube. I mean, granted, they don't delete it, but they're not going to want to delete it because they're trying to build their channel and build their subscribers. But this video got 158,000 views. And the more you sponsor or the more that you pay for this influencer marketing on YouTube is the way to succeed today because you can get a lot more organic reach than Instagram. And everyone's kind of focused only on Instagram, but Today, it's not as effective as it was before. Like this is the way that I do it, and this is kind of one of my secrets that I haven't told anyone, is that I do sponsorships or I do affiliate marketing through these guys. So either if you go on my, on my uh, website and you take a look at this affiliate program, I leave this option available. So basically, it's for every product that they sell through their own unique promo code, um, they would get the you know whoever purchased from their site would get 10% off and that person who's you know like here they would make five dollars for everyone sold so you see what I'm doing there like they be it's a win-win for them because they're getting sponsored um, this is all again for only small channels and you can try to convince them like hey let's you know be a part of my ambassador program get paid five dollars or you know what's your flat rate you know and I for People like this that basically just make compilations, it's easier for them to keep creating a lot of videos. You can see all these videos that they create, and this is probably one of the ones that I've contacted, is saying, like, how much would you charge me for to, to post um, my ad at, at the beginning of your video? And what I would say is, like, hey, um, I would ch I charge a dollar per 1,000 view up to $100, and they're more than likely to do it. So, like, for something like this, I would pay up to $158, and um, I would charge $1. You know, they charge me a dollar per 1,000 videos. So just that's just something that would benefit you and them. So on top of that, they would also get, like, a $5 per speedy blender sold so that's just another way and I, I love this idea because it keeps your video there at all times and when you you people are just focusing on doing influencer marketing where you know your video or your your ad just gets shown that one time and then it's gone it's deleted forever and I felt like I was wasting money and it didn't work out for me so this this was like a new way that worked out for me um, so again I sponsored YouTube channels I did the same thing for Facebook channels because uh, a lot of, there would be some that would post like funny videos. I contact them and I do the same thing. So based on all of that, based on you know taking all these influencer marketing and getting them to post my ad, I'd send a lot of traffic to my site. And then only then once I started gathering data because I had my Facebook Pixel already set up, then I would just set up for retargeting retargeting those same people that visit my site because who who doesn't you know make a purchase off the first time that they see my site so then I would retarget them and then only then I would do a look-alike audience based on the customers that I've already sold to so say I've already done 20 sales or 50 sales all those customers I would do a 1% look-alike and make Facebook do the work for me you know I was tired of Facebook you know, me just randomly guessing who my target audience would be. Like, make Facebook gather all the data for you, and then you can scale that way. I mean, there's some shop, there's there's some Shopify or um, YouTube gurus that are saying like, you know, only do Facebook ads. But I don't have, you know, I don't know if you're me or whatnot. I don't have five thousand dollars to just start testing ads and seeing what fails, and then scaling rapidly. That's that's that way didn't work for me. This way did. Um, and then another thing that people don't focus on are like Snapchat ads or Google ads, YouTube ads. So I really just focus on doing multiple things and that's what was working to be successful for me. Like even Snapchat, like people don't even talk about it. Yes, yes, you know, Snapchat is, has kind of been dying down, but did you know that like roughly the audience of Snapchat are maybe about 15 to 24 years old and they're all still using Snapchat and they just recently opened up the same, you know, it's just as easy to create an ad like on Facebook as it is on Snapchat now. And then you can go and create an ad, you know, do um, 
conversions, you know, optimize it for conversions. You can choose the formats and things like that. They made it a lot easier. So now it's a self kind of self do it platform to make your ads on 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 um, Snapchat and nobody else is doing that. So what you guys really need to focus on is like, you know, you see a shiny object, everyone's looking at Instagram influencer marketing and that was doing well and you can do still do all right with it but you're not going to be successful right off the bat because back in 2016, 2017, yes, it was it was great when no one else was doing it, but in today, like you need to start doing things like this, you know, like sponsoring and the cool thing when you find you find influencers that are small, they get so excited that they think a company is sponsoring them. So it's a win-win for you and a win-win for them because they're like, okay, I'm still getting paid for my videos because I'm not big yet. You know, I'm not getting money off these YouTube revenue. So what can I do? I'll have, you know, these companies that come to me and, you know, sponsor my channel. So that's exciting for them and it's exciting for you because you, they, they can get a viral video like this for 158,000 views and that's your product that's being shown. And this is just a 1,200 subscriber uh, YouTube channel. So that's, that's something that you guys need to focus on is just multi-channel ad advertising and other people um, kind of, you know, doing influencer marketing through other avenues and not just Instagram. So basically my key success factors for me that has worked for the last three or four years is you know make sure that you find a new un unique product and you're following a trend um, because if you find if you try to sell a product that's already out there and easily accessible you need to find a way to differentiate yourself whether it be um, a design or it be that you know the way you private label your brand you know when I first saw blendjet.com and I saw they were doing well I I try to focus on what can I do to be different and do, during my research on Alibaba I just found a cool design I just found a better design product that I thought visually was better designed so that's why I chose this and I didn't see anywhere else in the market so that's why I chose it um, you want to make sure as you start gaining sales and getting traction that you do private label the product again try my trick if it works for you where you just order a sample and that one sample also has your logo on it so then you can use it as content for your website again make sure you have a professional website there's a difference between having you know this website um, or blendjet and then a poor you know the pure blend it's it's not a highly optimized converting website and you should be able to see the difference you know like the quality of photo here is grainy you know it's just and then you know in the FAQ they even say it takes 15 to 20 business days for it to reach you so you can tell um, that your average customer can find out that this is a, a shop this is a drop shipping site and they're not gonna want to convert or they're not gonna want to purchase on a site like this because it doesn't look as professional as the competitors you know I feel a little more safe buying from blendjet.com than the pure blend and that's and that's solely based on the website so that's just one thing you need to focus on um, then as you, you again as you gain more traction and you and you private label the product faster shipping times than your competitors using ShipBob ShipBob go on ShipBob.com if you want to take a look at it but you order in bulk and they handle all your shipping logistics for you I think they charge about four dollars per product being sent out and then now because you sit you sent it to ShipBob.com um, you can offer like next day delivery you can offer three day delivery and uh, they highly you know like they just worry about all that logistics so you don't have to worry about shipping the product yourself and you also have a product that's private labeled because if you just drop ship directly from China you will you cannot you cannot drop ship directly from China China and have a custom logo on your product you cannot private label and then super key thing is just marketing through different different channels you know Instagram influencer marketing did work for me in the past but you know today it's not as efficient or as optimal as it was before so you just have to go through different routes and um, you know whether you're going on fame bit to find influencers or you're just doing you know researching on YouTube to find different influencers that's related to your specific niche that's what you need to do and focus on different avenues of of advertisement so like whether you're focusing on snapchat ads Google ads just try to your best to learn different avenues uh, of, of trying to do that and then another thing is that you want to gather data so that you can scale so the only way that you're gonna scale is like 
this takes a lot of work or you know marketing through multiple channels you can't really scale that way so the way you scale is you know gathering data so that you can target these people who've already they're already hot leads and now they can come back to your website through Facebook ads retargeting and then on top of that once you gather data of people who've already purchased from you then you use the look-alike audiences and then you can start scaling by making your campaigns a thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars um, per day because you already you're marketing to people who might already like look alike as far as your customers and then you can be successful going that way instead of guessing your Facebook ads and which a lot of people do and they waste a lot of money and they get discouraged because they do the guessing game like and subscribe for more tips and strategies on how to be successful on drop shipping on Shopify comment below Facebook ads if you want to see if that's my next video to kind of go deep into detail about how I was successful dealing with Facebook ads. Again, like and subscribe for more tips and strategies on how to be successful online, creating a business and making money. And then comment below Facebook ads or any type of suggestion that you want to see in the next video. Again, this is Michael Launcher Startups and I hope you have a great day.